Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Largely Catechized Life. Seventh commandment, you shall not steal. And by steal, um, I, I don't just mean grabbing an iPhone that's not yours and running away. This, Luther says, is actually a fairly widespread commandment. He writes, This is indeed quite a widespread and common vice, but so little regarded and observed that it exceeds all measure, so that if all who are thieves and yet do not wish to be called such were to be hanged on gallows, the world would soon be devastated, and there would be a lack both of executioners and gallows. You see, stealing is not just taking something that doesn't belong to you. It's doing anything that works against your neighbor's well-being when it comes to his possessions. And so, even things like being lazy at work, being negligent, stealing, overcharging, fraud, stealing. This is something we all tend to inherently recognize, because who hasn't complained about being ripped off? Who hasn't complained about having to work with somebody that doesn't do anything there? Sin breaks stuff, but we are still so hesitant to call it sin. We try and rein God's law in, dumb it down so that we can raise ourselves up because we would rather be called honest citizens and good Christians than thieves and sinners. But God here, he calls us to look at the full depth of the seventh commandment, we should fear and love God that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve his possessions and income. This isn't just so that we can look at our enemies and, and take them down a peg and call them thieves when they really are stealing. It's so that we would recognize something in ourselves before we try and build a tower up to heaven based on our good works and our excuses. Our excuses will not save us. And even though the world will sometimes condone things that are wrong, God does not. If the world treated this commandment the same way God did everyone, everyone would face the gallows. But it's the gallows that our Lord enters to save thieves. He is crucified between two thieves to save them, to forgive them, to promise them paradise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great love for you and for me, even though we are sinners, even though we cannot keep this commandment, he bears its wrath for us. He enters the gallows for us to bleed and to die for us that we might be called forgiven sinners. When we look at the depth of the seventh commandment, we're going to find in ourselves a whole lot of sin, but we can find a whole lot of sin that Jesus died for. And we can finally call ourselves the thieves and the, thin the sinners that Jesus saves. This is real peace, not a tower built to heaven based on our excuses, but a God who descends to the gallows to save. Higher Things thanks you for your support. Please continue to support the work we do with youth by going to our website at higherthings.org clicking on the support and donating securely through PayPal. Your gift helps us in our mission to support pastors, youth workers, and parents in daring our church's youth to be Lutheran. Higherthings.org slash support. Give today.